is Rock Art Paradise. It's probably one of the few places in the country, perhaps the world, where there's such a predominant supportable rock art. Uh, it remains a mystery how it got 12 feet below the surface uh, into a gravel pit. Another mystery is we don't know how, how old it is. Or we can suppose it was the mound builder culture, but we really don't know. Could be quite a bit older. That's what some of our colleagues think. Oh my God, I'm gonna pack what I got. If I don't stop, I just... I'm yeah, you control. gotta think of your legs, my friend. That's what I'm saying, I can't help it though. Yeah, I start addictive. getting stupid. It's addictive. The, the, the addiction of the fine is... Yeah, it's that sense of discovery. The addiction of the fine is you're about to step on it. <laughs> huh? Well, it's hard to, it's hard to break <laughs> them. That's the good thing. Although I broke some. Yeah, I think it is. Related cultures. I think it is. I think it's the mound building uh, before and after. But with portable rock art, they could have had a piece in the family or in the tribe for tens of thousands of years for all we know. And it's scattered here among more recent pieces done 1200, 1300 years ago. Unlike a petroglyphic rock, where you're looking at perhaps a one plane, a singular double image. Here we're looking at multi-dimensional rock, it's portable, and uh, we could have a piece from thousands of years ago sitting next to a piece from a thousand years ago. One thing I'd like to answer along with uh, Clay is he says that a lot of this rock is uh, not natural, it was imported. We could use some help uh, with geologists on that point. And there's a lot of art that uh, we believe were tools. And by validating these tools with an archeologist, I think that would advance our uh, cause and of discovery forward.